future, Talk Radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. This is On Air with Tony Sweet, your number one source for all things entertainment, exclusive interviews, and guests from TV, film, the Broadway stage, and your favorite musical artists of today. Talking shop is a given, but deep conversation is Tony's specialty. On Air with Tony Sweet starts now, exclusively on UBN Radio. Okay, it is On Air with Tony Sweet. I am Tony Sweet. The host of the show, but I am excited to have with me the very gorgeous, yes. sexy. I, I'm back. Yeah, supermodel. I guess you're talking about me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming. Well, I was still talking about me, but. <laughs> I think talking about Ron. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but we have Erica Renee Davis in the house. Hi, guys. I'm happy to be oh back. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, I haven't been back since the. Um, the world went orange. I know, and I thought I pissed you off or something. I'm right. like, yeah. yeah. She was like, oh, I have my hair to do. <laughs> I right. got my nails to get <laughs> done. <laughs> my, my green nails. Hi, guys. Oh, I love ah, green. Electric green. I know. Green. Well, green. before before we interview or, or introduce our, our guest uh, in studio, I wanna I wanna find out what have you been doing. Um, a yeah. little bit of everything. It's interesting. Um, a lot of times actors will say, "Oh, it's been so slow for me," and I'll be like, "Oh, Not yeah, for me you. too." Not for me. It's been super super busy. Um, booked. Three commercial spots. How many? One, two, what? Right. Three. (laughs) Um, From like December to um, mid Jan, end of January. Uh um, I'm working on my web series called Posers about three suburban females who quit their nine to five jobs to pursue careers in rap. Um, So we're finishing up, tidying up the pilot and getting ready to pitch to CISO and Freeform and Full Screen. Um, Did you write it? So I'm a co-writer, yes. So my writing partner, Annie Knutson, created it. And I am a co-writer on the web series. So working on Posers and... And auditions, pilot season, and going out there and yeah. here with you today. I'm so excited. We love Aunt, uh, Erica. Uh, always a great time with you. Um, and so we're going to introduce two amazing <laughs> guests. Uh, we have a fabulous actress, singer, and uh, again, she should be a supermodel. Right. Uh, we have Rosalind Kind <laughs> in the house. Go, Rosalind. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi. How you doing? It's been so long. It has been. uh, Listen, I think it's been at least four or five, maybe six years. I've been doing this almost nine. Wow. So it's been a while. Yes, it has. And then I got to go see you perform. Right. And... Right. Amazing. You missed me this I time, though. Right? I did. I missed you. That was my fault, too, because I had every intention of calling you. And sure. Mm-hmm. As a matter that, fact, they no, always say that. I had, Grant <laughs> gave me your number, and then just oh, really? stuff get, uh, got lost. I was in Florida. I came back and whatever. Well, but I'm glad you're I see here today. We're here today for this, uh, this other event. Well, a, next time I want to go okay. front row All because, right. listen, <laughs> listen, I will throw my underwear on <laughs> stage. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got right. it. Right. Next time you get first dip. That's right. Red underwear. That Red. Red. <laughs> yeah. Thongs. It's funny because when I put it on, it was white. So I don't know. Oh. <laughs> so here. <laughs> bad. That was bad. That was really bad. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. Um, so, but we have amazing producer, filmmaker. Uh, was what, what else do you do? Just you, call me Sybil. Oh, okay, Sybil. Oh. David Zimmerman's in the house. Yeah. Hi, David. Hi. I love. This is my first time here. It is. I you are a virgin. I am a Tony Stark. Oh, Tony, Tony, Tony Stark. Tony Stark? Did I, where did right. that come from? Right. I'm like, Iron, Iron Man? Tony, Tony <laughs> Sweet. Tony <laughs> that's right. You're Iron Man. That's right. Uh, well, no, maybe I'm a little rusty man. Right. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's so excited to have both of you on. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about why you're here, and then we're just going to open it up and just have hey. a great conversation about Open the about Pandora's yeah. box. So uh, oh. My oh. Next Breath. <laughs> so David, can you tell us about uh, My Next Breath? Well, eight years ago, uh, we got a group of actors together uh, who happened to be a little different. Mm-hmm. One happens to be three and a half foot tall, one's blind, one's deaf, one's me, one's a quadriplegic, it, people. Mm-hmm. And um, we got together for classes, and the one of the questions that was asked during these 11 nights uh, was, what do you want the most at this moment in your life? Huh. Uh, which... Anybody could, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's a question we all ask ourselves. Right. Right. Well, the stories that came out during the 11 nights were about brothers, mothers, lovers, sisters, uh, fathers, human stories. 
And what we're doing is eight years later, at the end of this year, we're coming back and connecting with all these people that were in that workshop. And it was the seed of Corey Allen, uh, Buzz and Rebel mm -hmm. Without a Cause. Mm -hmm. Right. I was uh, his assistant, and we became good friends. He was like the grandfather that I never met. And um, so we're coming back for a benefit on a Sunday, March 19th, 2017, and we're going to have a blast. And it will help us fund for the rest of filming nice. uh, and editing and moving it forward so we could get the breath out there. <laughs> this is good. And you have, yeah. I mean... Rosalind's in it. Rosalind, yes. oh my God. Mary yes. Wilson. Mary, I mean, come on. Yeah. These are some great people. Bruce Valanche. Bruce Valanche. Um, so, Jerry Jewell, Kathy Buckley. We have Michael Orland on piano. Mm -hmm. All right. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Chris Hendricks. So, so Rosalind, when, when yeah. you heard about this uh, film yes. and then also yes. the benefit, so tell us about how you got involved. Well, David and I were introduced by our mutual friend, Kathy Landers. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, she, you know, we, we kind of hit it off, mm -hmm. and uh, he started sending me information about Next Breath, and and the and, what, and the, we did some other stuff. We went well, to an event that had to do with um, we went to, uh, to an yeah, Actors for uh, Autism uh, event. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So and that, it was very, really kind of interesting to see how these children are. They're working with them, so they they act or dance or sing, and brings them out. It's wonderful, mm. you know. And mm -hmm. they're, matter of fact, I, I was telling a friend of mine about it, but I don't know if her her son got in it. But oh, she I loved the idea. Yeah. We we'll have to find out about we'll have it. To check. And um, because sometimes these are the these little kids are the forgotten entities, right. like the elderly, they're the forgotten entities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And through my through my life experiences, I have become incredibly sensitive to those who are left out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the elderly children. I remember years ago when I was still very young, I had my, my, uh, mentally challenged children in my audience mm -hmm. and I went out into the audience and I sang to them and touched them Aww. and el elderly also because it's so important yeah. mm -hmm. it's so important that they feel that they have value and they're loved and they're worth it. and my heart just goes out mm -hmm. and so um, anything I guess David connected with me on right. that on that angle and uh, mm -hmm. he sent me some information on next breath and said to me I'm gonna be doing this fundraiser would you be involved and I said Count me in. Really. That's Count awesome. In. This is great. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, wh and where's it going to be at again? At the Catalina Jazz Club in Hollywood. Nice. Just right down the street. Right. Right, just right down there. You just had a show there. I just, I did last weekend. It was last weekend, wasn't it? It was last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> You're so busy, you can't even keep up. You're with like, your I own think schedule. it was. Yeah. Stunning, yeah. stunning show. The best. Yeah, it was just incredible. What was the show like? Were you the headliner? Or what? I, I'm the one and only. Oh, and nice. I had Michael on piano, and we had our trio. Uh, and um, it's a show that uh, was directed for me by Richard J. Alexander. Mm -hmm. We put it together in 2014. I debuted it at uh, 54 Below in mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. and I had gone back to New York after not playing a nightclub there for 20 years. Mm. Wow. Now, I had been in Brooklyn in 2012, and I did a major concert at the Performing right. Arts Center at Brooklyn College. But everybody told me that being in Brooklyn was not being in New York. Right. So, <laughs> really? Uh, You're so like, oh, okay. I, I had been on tour with my sister, and mm -hmm. Richard uh, directed or you know, helped direct the show. And I had known him for years, but we just never had done anything together except for a, fun, a UJA fundraiser in New York in 1993. And so I approached him because so many of my fans uh, came up to me and said, when are you going to do a new show? You know, and, and it was so great on the road because I'm working to 20,000 people. You know what the mm. feeling is? Right. Oh my God. Yeah. It was incredible. Sure, rub love, it in because I, I don't. Really <laughs> <thought> <laughs> I, I, right. Yeah, no. Don't I, know. I really love big sta bigger stages, you know, yeah. theater more so than than just club work. Right. Because I mean, mm -hmm. right. to me, you should be able to get to a bigger crowd also and bring them close to you. They, sh they should each be able to feel that you're singing to each and every one of them mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what my goal is, because I want to touch people's hearts. I'm, I'm, I'm in this, I am in this to help heal, to help heal the world. So music therapy. Right. That was, music that was therapy. the word that hit me when I saw yeah. your show. It was a healing night, especially what's going on in the world yeah. now. I went so in there needed. just 
it was full of love and it felt like family. Does mm. it does it stress you out though as a performer when you're trying to sell tickets or you know you're trying to you know hope hopefully the very last minute you have a packed house or do you just go out there and just perform and don't have any regard for if every seat is filled? Well, not not always every seat is filled. It's mostly sold out or whatever. Sometimes they're not as sold out. But and there are places that I've traveled where people don't know me as well yet, mm -hmm. where I'm known. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, what's always great for me is when I'm doing when I do television. When I went back to New York, I was on the Today mm -hmm. Show. Yes. Well, forget it. And I even said to Richard, I said, who the heck is going to come out on Easter Sunday? <laughs> and it was packed. Packed. Right? <laughs> packed. But uh, television always has always been a good venue for me right. because it brings the the wider attention like years ago when I was coming back to the rose tattoo remember the rose tattoo because mm -hmm. I used to do the back lot which was right. a great room years ago at the factory yes on, uh, Robertson yeah and that had closed down so that now we were doing the rose tattoo but I did uh, Geraldo at that time. Oh, my gosh, wow. And the, they start, this minute the show went off the air, their, their phone started ringing. When is she going to be? Oh, can't you add another show? I'm coming from <laughs> St. Louis. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, so I, I always know that that does well for me, mm -hmm. right. getting the message right. out. You know, I don't know, you know, I just feel that um, I just need to communicate to people's hearts. I think I, I, I love what you're saying. I love what that you're saying that it's it's not only therapy for you it's therapy for mm -hmm. your audience yes, yes. and uh, well being it, able to touch other people's hearts right. and seeing when they come up to you and tell you how you made right. them feel mm -hmm. or my god i've never experienced anything like this or whatever it that's my rule that's mm -hmm. like fills my heart mm -hmm. i not only I, to touch them but it filled me the fact that i look up to the man upstairs right. i don't know where you're at with that but right. i believe i've always been spiritual and i always ask him to make me his vessel mm to spread his his word of love and light. And you can't do that through an ego. And that's when I, I the thing about you have I've, you know I'm not known you a know, lot I mean well well but just right. you're always so kind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm sweet. I'm so sweet. No, it's <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to change my we, name. We should we're go we're on the road. Down. Yeah, we're sweet and kind. No, I'll pitch you first. Kind of sweet. No, <laughs> kind of sweet. Kind of sweet. <laughs> kind of sweet is kind of good, actually. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, you can't really have a huge ego, even though, I mean, we love being up on what we do and you yeah. being up the stage. Mm -hmm. That's somewhat of an ego. But you don't have an ego where it's... But it's not to where you're be you, you feel you're better than the world right. or anybody else. Right. This is where God granted me my gift. Right. And it's meant for me to share. Yeah, it's very angelic. You have an angelic way. voice. You have an angelic voice. It's it's so smooth and just, uh, I don't know, it, I, I relate it to like Celine Dion. Because mm -hmm. when I listen to Celine Dion, it's just mm -hmm. like I'm in a whole different world. Same with your mm -hmm. voice. It's just you, you take us on a, a, on a, a universal journey. journey. A musical and, journey. Yeah. And but lyrics are so important to me. And it, it's same with me. I, yeah. I, I, people it's like sing this, and yeah. I'm like, oh, songs I don't are a three act play. Yeah, you know, oh. and I, I live every moment of my songs, and I express them. I just don't, you know, sing the melody. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's coming from the heart, and I think that's, that's what touches, that's what touches people. Mm. Like when I did, um, can you read my mind? The reason mm. it, it, it uh, blows people's minds, and I remember Leslie Brickus wrote to me, "Oh my God, mm. it's because they said well, I feel like I've never heard that song before." Hmm. You know, it's all in how it's delivered. It's all in, you know, whether you are really living right. the lyrics. Right. So you, which means you have to believe those lyrics. Yeah. And you, f you yeah. recorded your first album right, right, out, right out of high school. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. My graduation day, I started recording. Now, oh, right. what was that experience like being, you were so young, and I can only mm -hmm. imagine, you know, being 18, 17 years old, being influenced by mm -hmm. whoever was around you in your life. Who influenced you the most as you recorded that album? Uh, who oh, influenced me the most on that? I don't know. You know, I I grew up in the British era, mm -hmm. the British uh, invasion. Yeah. So Beatles. I loved the Beatles <laughs> and, right. and Dusty Springfield and Petula Clark and Cilla Black and you know and all these other groups. That was my era, more so even coming out of Motown, but mostly the English mm -hmm. invasion. Um, I love Shirley Bassey. Mm. Mm. I love, and I love think Shirley Bassey. As yes. much as I uh. guess there's, there's parts of me that are reminiscent because of genes of my big sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. And our mother who... What, could she gorgeous, sing? Oh, my God. When we were on tour, when we were at the Hollywood Bowl, we played a piece of my mother singing. 
Really? Yeah. Now, Rosalind, this, this, is re- this is really off cuff. Yeah. Tony and I were talking about it off air. <laughs> but I, I saw pictures of, of your mother. I was like, Tony, I was like, are they biracial? Because her, her mom looks like a black woman. Like, was your mom biracial? No. No. <laughs> Russian Jewish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's what she asked me. I was like, I'm, maybe you should ask her. That <laughs> biracial. <laughs> no. My mother, my mother was so fair. Really? What in, kind of, in the pictures? But you know, I have to tell you, there was a time when I played... Um, Puerto Rico and they did mm-hmm. the, the uh, posters of me and they made them black and white and oh, I look like I had facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know, oh, how, you know how they did the picture but yeah. no That's my hilarious. mom was so fair. Really? Okay. Yeah. I was like I wonder, yeah. what, like, I wonder what picture that was. There were pictures she had like short yeah. black hair and like a big beautiful smile and she was with you and your sister and I was like well, I gotta ask her. <laughs> gotta ask her. She's like, that's Maybe the first time I've done. You don't know. <laughs> <Maybe>. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, wherever the genes come from, I'll take them. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> now, could your but, father? Was he talented in, in entertainment? No, or no, my father actually was. I was a late in life child, so mm. my father was fifty-seven when I was born. What? Wow. I was the child of my mother and father's second marriage. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. I, I was late in life. My father, I never even really knew much about him until years later when I met his eldest son from his first marriage who told me so much about my you father. You met him? Mm. So you didn't know? No. You, oh. I had, you know, I hmm. didn't, it was a whole other. Whole other family. Yeah. That's like my mother. Yeah. My mother's mother left when mm-hmm. she was like a year old and then being the, I, I, I'm an Ancestry.com t- mm-hmm. type of person. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you have, we have a whole family. I want to know who this yeah. family is. So I did all this research, research. And then one day, her sister that she never knew she had right. mm-hmm. calls out of nowhere in her, like when I think my mom was in her early 60s. My mom's right. 78 now. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm your sister. And my mom's like, uh, hello. And, but it's, yeah. it's, yeah, sometimes you get those surprises. And, yeah, um, I, you know, that would be something I've, I've thought about. I've toyed with doing Ancestry.com. My can give me a call. I can help fa- you. I'm good at that. Came, I'm good at that. My father came here uh, at like the turn of the, He was 12 years old. Oh. He was born in 1892. What? Your father wow. was. Get out Holy of here. Look how old I am now. You're a young man. But yeah, he a, can. he yeah. came here when he was a kid. And you know, he'd bring his father over and he had to defend them. I mean, all this. Right. Mm. And my mom was born in Brooklyn. Her parents came from um, Minsk or Pinsk. In Russia, they hmm. were immigrants, um, but she so she was first generation here. But my father, I th- we were like this fir- the first generation from him. Right. Wow, that's mm. pretty awesome. You know? So you know, but some I, I wasn't born until many years later. So because my and my half brother is older than my my older brother Shelley. Mm. It's amazing, but he still he tells me he still swims in skivvies and he plays tennis. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. There you go. And that exercising. You know? Right. I'm telling Keeps you. Keeps you young in the life. It does. It's amazing. Well, I, I, growing, uh, he said Greg, growing up in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. uh, and you recorded at 18? Your well, first I started one? doing demonstration records for my sister's publishing company okay. mm-hmm. when I was still a junior in high school. Did you know so, you wanted to do that though, or did you just like, oh, I'll do it? You know, no, I or... always loved to sing. I was okay. a, I was a loner a lot as a kid. I mean, I had friends and stuff, but I would go home and create uh, uh, scenarios for myself to act out and play. And if I, there was a television show that I loved, I would write myself into the script. <laughs> <Yeah>. Smart. <laughs> I love like, that. Remember yeah. years ago, Fury, the horse thing, and there was yeah. uh, uh-huh. and there was Peter Graves was the adoptive father of, right. of the kid, and the Fury. I would put myself like I was Jim's wife. You know, <laughs> things like, things Smart. Were, and I was. It was like, you know, a kid show and stuff, but this is, I would act these things out. I would put records on from films that I love, like Exodus mm-hmm. and Create I used to fly, ar- and, I flew around the house know? on a broomstick. You know, like this, would you know? Why am I not surprised? I'm just kidding. Hey, I'm here for that. I like that. But that, but that's, I mean, that's, that's awesome, but, though, because you have to find your own creative outlet, yeah, especially there, growing and, up in the family. Yeah, but so there musical. was a time that I thought I was going to be a math teacher because I was so good in math, and I used to mark my math teacher's papers and all this kind of stuff. You know, I was like teacher's pet. Uh-huh. That's Goody. a big switch I was from. Miss, I was Miss Goody Two Shows. It was very hard for me to become a show business personality and be a little, uh, not that I'm risque, but I'm, I'm, I, over the years, I learned to be a little more out there, but it's safe. Right. You know, it's safe to s- do things on stage where you may not do it amongst people on mm-hmm. the same floor. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking but of safe, it took though, like, me a long time to come out of that shyness. What's the scariest thing you've ever experienced, like as a performer, as a solo performer, whether it's been 
I don't know, stage fright or forgetting the worst oh, of song yeah. or... You know, that's happened too. Yeah. And I've created my own lyrics, you know, <laughs> as long as people don't, sometimes... You, A lot happens, of people don't know. You know? Right. Yeah. It does happen. And I've been on stage when I was doing a theater piece, uh, Leader of the Pack in Canada. Uh, Andrew Stevens was uh, uh, the lead man and I was playing Ellie Greenwich. And he did something so awful. Can, should I talk about this? I talk want about to it. We, we want you to started know. it. I, could, I mean, it was, we were in Calgary, Canada, mm -hmm. at the Stage West. And, um, and it, he leaves the stage at this one point where I'm on stage with um, the record producer and all this kind of... And all of a sudden, from back, you hear... <laughs> <laughs> no. And I was like frozen for a second and then I cracked up like what this is and I realized that people in the audience thought I <gasps> let my hair out. No. Flatulence. Are you kidding me? I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, but I had a laugh because it was funny. Right. <laughs> You're right. But I was like, That's oh my funny. God, these people actually think I go. Uh. <laughs> so that was probably one of my worst experiences <laughs> on stage. Did you say afterwards, no, no, I was. <laughs> no, I'm sure they left the theater thinking I did something. <laughs> right. The headline. Yeah, we oh saw Rosalind Kine. Oh, thought. my God. What did she <laughs> it was a great show, but. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> but <laughs> it was a gas. I'm yeah, just kidding. But, but this, you know, there are things that happen. Sometimes, you know, I learned, I learned early in life never to eat before the show because hmm. sometimes it's hard to breathe, number one. Right. And if you ate something that wants to come up and you have to. <laughs> and not, you know, pull away from the mic. I mean, there are th we are human, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. there are things that happen that we have to learn how to handle. And right. the first time it happens, we might not have handled it as nicely, but you <laughs> right. learn the tricks. You know. Do you have a um, ritual? Because I know when I sing, I always had this. I I didn't even know that I did it. I had the same ritual. Do you have like a ritual to prepare for your? My ritual is basically I do affirmations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do affirmations before I go on stage, asking the Lord. My God, your God, every you know, uh, to guide my path, put my feet on the path that I'm supposed to be on and headed in the right direction. And if I veer off, correct me as soon as huh. possible. Let me be the best person I can be. Let me be the best that I can be in what I do. Singing, let me sing from the bottom of my heart and the depth of my soul. Mm. And to have your light come from, fill me up and hit anybody in my audience who needs to hear your mm -hmm. message of love and light. I like that. That's, I do too. that's very strong. And, uh, that's a very strong affirmation. And I love that you're so spiritual. You know, as, you don't yeah. oftentimes see a lot of celebrities who speak openly True. about their spirituality. Like you watch mm -hmm. the award shows and mm -hmm. very rarely does a person thank God, you right. know, right off the bat. But right. I do have this question for you. Mm -hmm. As science has discovered these new planets in the universe, mm -hmm. and I grew up Christian, Baptist, mm -hmm. Methodist, um, and I think as I've gotten older, I don't associate so closely with religion but more with spirituality right. mm -hmm. but speaking to someone mm -hmm. else and you know you two right. david and tony right. now that we have discovered this new universe and we'll probably continue to discover new universes outside of what we mm -hmm. thought was our only universe how do you think these these discoveries i guess debunk what we as christians or believers have well, grown up depends, thinking it depends what you grew up thinking i did a lot of research in 1984 when i was looking for my reason for why i'm here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things happen in your life and they make you go on a search asking why mm -hmm. what is my purpose and i was regressed and uh i found out what my purpose was and i mm -hmm. you know it, it's taking me a while to maneuver it but um I, I totally bel believe that, and I. When you talk about other planets and mm -hmm. everything, I do have an association and a belief in that. Mm -hmm. And I, I pray to God. I would love the, the good energy of other planets where they, they are all in love, and there's no war, and mm -hmm. they, they they habitat with you know they right. cohabit with each other in peace. Um, I would love to experience that. I've, I it's t you know it's hard to talk about this part, but I've always felt that I've. Uh, I think I once did. I had an out of body with my father's soul. Mm -hmm. He came to visit me when my mom left, um, and I did have um, an experience. That's beautiful. With, mm. with beings. Yeah, that's beautiful. With beings from and I and I, I even called a friend of mine who's uh, who's very uh, psychic, and I asked her. I said, Judy, did this happen to me, or did I dream this? Mm. And she said, No, it happened because I was I was really meditating a lot at that time mm. and really really looking for my purpose. And I don't know everything that they may have bestowed upon me in my brain or mm -hmm. my memory or in my subconscious. But I know that the experience made me feel really positive mm. and really good. And that's a good and thing. And I figure that, you know, sometimes we can't he handle all the things, which is why they get stuck in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. um, 
the things that we're told that, or the things that we have to deal with, and we can't handle it. So it's given to you to be there for when the time is right that it needs to be mm-hmm. used. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I do it from assumption, whatever, but it's what makes me feel right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, full of purpose. And you uh, said it was in the '80s when you went on the search. Mm-hmm. Was there what what was around that time? What was kind of is there a situation or a, a topic that um, came up that really started making you think? Well, or was I it a was hard also uh, getting divorced. I was separated. Oh, okay. I was married for a very short time. I was trying to understand that because I waited for so long. Right. And I, I, you know, I wanted the happy home and the, you know, ev- everything with all the trimmings, and I wasn't getting that. I had a great time planning my wedding. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a purpose. Every, right, I, right. I loved every minute of it. But, um, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it seems to me that that was kind of falling apart. And my, my career has been one that's been up and down and side to side, mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. just a, a general take off and mm-hmm. go. I mean, you know, I can't say that it's been easy, but nobody said life or anything right. you want is easy. This is For true. some people, whatever their journey, everybody's path is different. And mine might have been where it's been because of the spirituality I had to attain. Mm-hmm. I was always spiritual as a child. I always believed in it, but may, I grew more in universal mm-hmm. spirituality. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, you know, I'm like a, a Jew, but I also I used to discuss psychic phenomena with my rabbi. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh yeah. How was wow. that with him? I mean, it was great. He was great. He was open to it. But you know, it's like I've just I called myself a more aware Jew, <laughs> you know? and I do. I mean, I, when I was a child, I didn't I didn't fear other people. I mm-hmm. didn't. I was very welcoming and understanding of other where other people were coming from mm-hmm. or what their beliefs were. As long as you, the basic belief is do unto others what you would have right, them amen. do unto you. No good from bad, evil from good, and just want to do good in this world. You wow. know, I, I mean, that's that's what makes us. Rosalind, will you marry me? Right. <laughs> I, know, right? I mean, just beautiful. <laughs> just I'm like, right. oh. I mean, Sometimes it's hard to attain, and you, you come through crossroads in your life where you are challenged. But I, I find that, you know, the old cliche, love is the answer. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's what I want to spread. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to spread hatred. and un- I want understanding. I want the people of the world to come together. Mm. I want us to be one, even interplanetary. Okay. Because I do believe that does exist, and I, I believe it's out there. I may not be here when it happens, but right, you right, know, yeah. But and I do believe that happens. And I think in my twenties, I mean, in my twenties, when I went on that spiritual journey, mm-hmm. I was, you know, born in Kansas. Mm-hmm. You were born in Georgia. Georgia. So I mean, we were Christian, right? You know, the Bible Belt. Uh, and I, I, I know, I, I, I always felt more spiritual, even mm-hmm. as a child. My mm-hmm. family didn't necessarily make me go to church. We right. went to church once in a while. But I always ask questions, mm-hmm. questions, mm-hmm. questions, yeah. questions, questions. I, but I always knew and I always mm-hmm. would tell my mom, I know God has a plan for me, mm-hmm. I mean, even as a child. But in my 20s is when I started going like the Buddhist temple. Mm-hmm. And Experiencing it, different things. Yeah, because yeah. it, it, it's not that I wanted to convert to you anything. You just wanted to understand yes. the differences yes. and what's, what's out there. Yeah, I mean, I, same way. I was very welcome. And my father, may he rest in peace, I mm-hmm. had a hard time with because he came from Tsarist Russia. So, oh, so he, that was was, the, he was in the pogroms. And so there What's was that always. For the people uh, that maybe. The Russians. I don't know. Uh, they, you know they, <laughs> What's that? They, for me. They, yeah, they, for me. They, they, left, they lived in shtetls, you know, kind of. Uh, a little different than the Holocaust, but you know, okay. they were persecuted. Okay. Mm. They didn't really have much freedom. I mean, the story of Fiddler on the Roof, oh, yes, a step, yes. you know, and they had, they had to live, and the Cossacks would come and invade, you know, create havoc. Mm-hmm. Um, and where was I going with this? I just lost Your my Your father, Zars Russia, father. Um, <laughs> God rest his soul. Spiritual, yeah. yeah. That he w- it was very hard for him. I mean, he, w- he loved my friends in the neighborhood, my Chinese girlfriend, it was our neighbors, all, but when it came to a, a guy, as I was getting mm. older, he was he felt fearful that I would a non a non Jewish man you know the, oh. of the the getting together of the and um, I never did I always had I mean I I when I was sixteen I had a sweet sixteen in a French restaurant my father didn't come because he was kosher oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> seriously <laughs> seriously. Following year, he threw me a sour seventeen. A oh, sour I seventeen. I don't know that he knew that that's what we called yeah. it, but it was yeah. a sour, at, a, at a kosher restaurant. <laughs> and my now family, eat your my, my family was there, and my friends were there, and my friends who I wanted to be sitting around, he separated us and had me sep- had me sitting within my family. Hmm. Because some of them weren't Jewish or whatever. Right. He's yeah. also born in 1892. Yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah. He gets a pass. Mean, right. But, it, but <laughs> right. yeah, it's very different. And I always wonder why I was able to be more open. 
I mean, I, I met kids online when I went for, to get my tickets for uh, a hard day's night downtown uh, Brooklyn and stuff. And we, I invited a girl that I had never met to come visit us in Brooklyn. <laughs> I mean, I was just really open. Were, was you know? your siblings like that? You know, I don't know because I'm the baby. Uh, okay, I, okay. Um, we're all the babies. We're all the babies. We discovered I'm out I, there. I, yeah, I we're all the, babies. I, yeah. I know. Baby. I know my <laughs> siblings are brilliant. Mm -hmm. I know they're multi-talented. My brother was incredible. Before he became a businessman, he was uh, an artist um, and had his own advertising agency mm -hmm. and built it up. My mm -hmm. sister, we all know. Right, right, right. And um, my nephew now. I mean, we have the, you know that that's in there. And everybody that they touch something, it becomes but, gold. But their and outlook so on life, like you, like I think um, the openness. You know, I don't know. I, I really huh. don't know the openness. I know Jason is more so. Um, Who's Jason? My nephew. Your nephew, okay. My nephew. Um, he's much more. He's done his own search. Right. Mm. And he's yeah. come into his own because he went through times where he wasn't comfortable within his own skin. Right, right. And he's a mensch. Mm. He's go a good, we call it in Jew, a good to mm. <laughs> Beautiful human being. I didn't know, and, and honestly, I didn't know he could sing. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I mean, yeah, beautiful. Voice. Uh, beautiful. Voice. None, of, none of us knew until he sh he did it so many years later. Yeah, I was like, what, what did this? Yeah. Guy? I was but like, every, wow. But everything he does, <laughs> he does artwork. He does pottery. He's made jewelry. Everything he's tried painting, it's gorgeous. Hmm. Hmm. Where does he, he live? Creative. He's <laughs> here. <laughs> he's here. And I have a four-legged nephew. He's on nephew. my side of the street, by the way. Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. And, and I have a four-legged great nephew that I babysit and take care uh, of, uh, Eli. So, that's um, sweet. but yeah, I you know I don't know if everybody you know in show business though you know those of us in show business we tend to be much more accepting. I think. Mm. Right. That's true. You, you know, know. Yeah, and yeah. I, you know we grew up in Brooklyn, so I have to say this: Brooklyn was an incredible melting pot. So, I mean, we had Chinese neighbors, Italian neighbors, French, you know, mm -hmm. everybody, Irish. They were all over. The, the, the Irish church was here. The Protestant church was here. The temple was here. It was a mix. Yeah. And nobody So it was minded. urban. It was urban. Yeah, so nobody I mean, minded back then. No. I mean, there might have been some, you know, but not to where we felt threatened. Right. I mean, those days people called you, for, uh, for hung out their windows and were like, look at what you're doing. And they would watch each other's children. Right. Mm. You know, you hear about those stories. Mm -hmm. It was a neighborhood. Mm, you know. I missed. I, um, that's where I grew up. Yeah. It's a, it was a yeah. neighborhood. It's like a small country town, and yeah. I, 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 I would not actually trade that for anything of growing up in a community. Right. Yeah. And you so, talk so much about community, and David and we all talked yeah. before the show started about you know community and where our nation is headed now. Like, how right. do you? <laughs> reconcile how you grew up and I mean right, David, I'm gonna sit back on this right. one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean how do you reconcile like how, how you I grew reconcile? up and David like you're an entertainer too like how do you I guess resolve how we are as entertainers versus mm -hmm. what we are going through as a country I, I think it's kind of hideous I, I really you know I, I don't really talk about this much out I keep this to my friends and you know my yeah. private my private line but um I don't like hatred and violence being spread, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of anti-Semitism mm -hmm. coming yeah. up again, yes. and denial. It, uh, and I think out. it's, it's yeah. it, and it's been incited. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say by whom, because I think we all know. Yeah. Right. Um, unnecessarily, to bring mm -hmm. out that kind of hatred and and uh, for anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For anybody, you know, and um, that that hurts me. That hurts mm -hmm. my heart. I mean, I there are things that are in you know coming to the table in policy or whatever that um, may not concern me, but my heart. Mm. I right. care about I the next person. Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't want anybody they shouldn't have. They shouldn't be taken yeah. care of. They shouldn't be right. thought of. Yeah, you that's know, beautiful. Life is yeah. so hard. Yeah. We anyway. should all be there for each right. other. Yeah. Life is doesn't hard anyway. It doesn't matter the color of our skin or whatever. The heart and the blood is the same it's color. The same. And, and you know mm -hmm. what? And spiritually speaking, universally, we all come from the same God, God, yes. the mm -hmm. same universal energy. Just a different We're all name. part of it. Yes, yeah, just mm -hmm. a different. Are you name. a New Yorker mm -hmm. too, David? I'm not. Everybody thinks I'm from New York. Oh, oh I thought you were Which from. Which I no, I'm from the Bay Area. Oh, oh. San Francisco Bay Area, uh, and I had my bar mitzvah when I was 13. And, okay, and I loved it so much I had another Again? one. <laughs> <laughs> at 16, at 25, he at lied 30. about he lied <laughs> about <laughs> his age. No, the year after, and I know I yeah. like. Yeah. Did you really? I did. Why? I loved it. I loved. You know I, I, that connection. It was <laughs> it was two things. It was the spirituality, and it was also being in front of people. Right. Because I love mm -hmm. that. Um, and it's you know we were, we're talking about religion, and yes, I'm Jewish, but I I think my religion is love. Mm -hmm. um, and that and I'm so blessed to be working where I'm working now at Performing Arts Studio West, mm -hmm. 
which is a group of actors who happen to have disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I bring in my group, which is Meet the Biz, which mm -hmm. is under, under their auspice right now, uh, where all actors come in. So it's mm -hmm. working all together. But I go in every day and I get hugs and it's all about love. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what keeps me going. That's what you know, it's Truly it's funny. Right. Also, uh, because my family, my father too, always wanted. I had to know who I was and where I came from. What my, you know, what my, my bloodline is. What mm -hmm. my my religion, my uh, the the things that we um, adhere to. And uh, so I had to go to yeshiva when I was mm -hmm. a little kid. And then I, when I had to leave yeshiva, I went to Hebrew school. Even though I went to public school, mm -hmm. I had to do both. But the one thing that I've always learned, no matter where I've traveled, is that we've always been taught to open your door mm -hmm. and, and, and your dining room to mm -hmm. the stranger. And Elijah. You know? And Elijah on, pay, on Pesach. Yeah. Yeah, 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 come in, Elijah. <laughs> come in, drink some wine. <laughs> come in here. Get come drunk in here, with darling. <laughs> You've got some wine for you. A little bit. Some wine <laughs> <shabbos>. <laughs> uh, you know. But we've always been taught that. To yeah. open yeah. the door to the one who is in need. Yeah. You know. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it seems to, because I grew up that same way. Yeah. I, I, I used to, my mom, because she was born in California, Not nothing yeah. against my okay. mother, but mm -hmm. my dad was born in Kansas. And so right. she would get so mad because here come like people f for Christmas that like, who are these people? Well, you know, they don't have a place to go. Well, your and, mom would get mad mm -hmm. or your dad would get Well, mad. my mom would get upset because she wanted to be the family and right, my dad would right. just, oh, come on in, you know, and we'd always make cookies and stuff and take them to the home, or not homeless, the elderly and mm -hmm. the people. So I grew up around of, for those people right. that didn't have a family or, right. and right. so it, it, it was wonderful to see that, but mm -hmm. you don't see that much more you don't. anymore. No, and I, and I, I find that a shame. It seems so closed. Yeah. yeah. And right. people are staying home a lot. Yeah. They are. Nobody's yeah. going out and enjoying this whole time. Life. Enjoy is life. Like, right. It's all. It's right. Yeah. We're all boxed you know, in from what the phone. heck is happening next. Every day you wake up, you know, it's like, Yo, now. Right. oh it's my like, God. No. And right. I just. Uh, we don't take time to breathe. <laughs> right. No. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you right. as a, a, a so you're right. That's why we friend, need to friend. take my next, next breath. <laughs> um, well, we still have about, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, one, I remember one, uh, you were on The Nanny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember, because I loved, I was a big fan of The Nanny, but I saw you and uh, you're so talented, not only as a singer, but you're a great actress too. Oh, thank you. I haven't done a, a lot, enough. I would love, I still would I was love a TV say, series. I wanted a TV series so badly. Said, she, has said, be, she has to be in our yeah. web series, Poser. Gotta, she, she, oh, can, can I come on? Uh, can you write me in? Absolutely. She just asked. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> See, the uh, universe yes. just, I, I just spoke. Ask. Yeah, yeah, you know. Ask and you um, shall receive. I love, I love, you know, act. I love acting. I, I always wanted a television. I love theater, but I love television more. When I was mm -hmm. signed to ABC Paramount, I was like, I lost two clothing sizes between Monday and the day of taping on Friday. <laughs> That's how incredible I felt about it. Wow. And I really wanted to be in it. And uh, my, my road took another, pay, you know, that was also before my search. All right. these things that kind of happened for me yeah. and then the rug comes under mm. and all this, you mm -hmm. know, it's, and you have to, you have to figure out why, am, you know, you start to say, why am I here? What is the purpose? I get, you know, this comes my way and then, and it feels like it's good for a while and then it goes, why? Mm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, and um, I, you know, I, I leave it up to uh, to the above powers because I obviously don't know everything, right. and I don't know where I'm supposed to be. But in my search, I did find out why I'm supposed to be, and so whatever my path is, it could be because of uh, that purpose. And I think everybody we meet, like you just said, I, I always wanted, and she offers. Uh, but, offer uh, groveling at but, oh, but you know what I'm but you know what I mean it's like <laughs> it's groveling kind no. but sometimes <laughs> but sometimes it's, it's so just funny. speaking it it's like just speaking it and you don't know who's next to you you don't know right. who that next opportunity well, is. even the nanny well, didn't uh, Fran meet uh, the producer yeah. or somebody on the airplane next to her yeah. and right. she had a chance to pitch it I, I have to <laughs> look, I don't know if I'm that aggressive <laughs> but I, <laughs> you think I am I think you're <laughs> Right. I think you're a blessing is what you are. Uh, yeah. I mean, Aww. no, since I've met you, it's just you, I come, it's like, I kind of talked to Roz today <laughs> because Aww. you really like settle me. Aww. Roz, Aww. what is your it's... ultimate career goal? What, like, what do you want to achieve, you know, before you retire? If you even ever retire, I don't, I don't know. Think she'll I ever probably retire. won't retire. Yeah, yeah I don't probably. see her ever yeah. retire. <laughs> um, my ultimate goal is to, um, 
Oh God, you know, it's like, it seems so, it's, this seems, this, now this is gonna seem like ego, but it's not. Okay? Yeah, Oscar, please. Tony, Innie, yeah, no, all the well, above, Well, yeah, you know, that's, that's all well and good and it's lovely, but it's really the people. Mm. It's really the people. Um, and I would love it. Why, you know, you're not going to deny it if you do a great job. But my reason for being is the people. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, years ago when I played Las Vegas, when I first moved here in 73, because everybody was leaving New York. All the nightclubs were closing. People were emigrating to L.A. And hmm. I started getting into more acting. And uh, I played Las Vegas when I first came here. And uh, Elvis Presley, may he rest in peace, was at the Hilton in the mm. main showroom. It said Elvis Presley in the middle and then I saw my my billboard alongside mm. introducing a new star to Las Vegas, Rosalind Kine. You're like, oh my God. And then I'm seeing, <laughs> he was like, the stories of him being in the elevator and if you liked a ring, he would take it off his hand and give it to you. And I mean, he was like mm. very generous with people and loving and the guys that played for him, who some of them played for me along the way in Vegas, they said that his shows were always like a happening. Hmm. Mm. Okay. This came into my psyche, and what I what I would love, and I, this is not ego, but I, it's not about how great thou art, you know, or whatever, but that something within you or I or whatever would call unto the masses, because there's something about you or what you do that f makes them feel love. Mm -hmm. So it's like calling of love, and they come, That's and beautiful. you share. The love. That's beautiful. You should be a preacher. I was getting ready to say know. that. She Jinx. Should be a <laughs> she is a preacher. Well, you, yeah, are. you are. I mean, you are. I mean, you're, you are no. giving your testimony, and you don't have to be in a pulpit to be a preacher, and your testimonies have been beautiful. Hallelujah. Obviously. Well, right. you know, good people. I like, so I love people with heart, mm -hmm. you know, so um, it, honest, good people. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask really real quick. Can we, uh, I, I we were talking earlier about the it's about the lyrics, but what yeah. is there a certain genre of music that? Because I remember interviewing Linda Etter, mm -hmm. and you know she's known for Broadway and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And I said, mm -hmm. Linda, what is there like a genre? Is there like some type of music you'd really love to sing? And she goes, well, Honesty, I've always wanted to sing country, and I went. <gasps> Linda Etter wants to sing. I mean, but I, I could hear it. In my, right. I was like, I could hear that. And I said, why don't you do it? And she's like, oh, nobody would. I'm like, I would listen to it. Yeah. What about you? Is there a genre that you would love to sing that you, people would be like, oh, what? I would never guess. Hip hop. Wow. <laughs> Hip hop, yes. Well, you know, I don't know. I've never tried that. How about you, too, and, you and Snoop Dogg or yeah. something, <laughs> like get together and do I it? I once oh, tried heavy shit. metal. Did you really? I, for a French record deal, I once tried heavy metal, but it's not me. And I remember playing mm. it for my sister. She said, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know? a good, that's a sister right there. I'm on the side. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, but um, I've, and I've tried some jazz. I maybe would maybe want to do a little more of that. Mm -hmm. But Broadway that. seems to be because I love the story song mm -hmm. and yeah. acting yeah. is mm -hmm. my thing. Uh, but I also take, you know, pop ballads and do the same with that. It's, it's, it all comes down to your heart right. and what you're trying to tell the masses, what you're mm. trying to share. Um, so it's not so much the type, although some I was, it would be fun to see if I could do hip hop. It I would don't be know. <laughs> just for the heck of it. It would go viral. We, know. We, we, have to, we have to produce a, a, we a should. hip hop a hip hop album. It would be hilarious. I think we it's should. Really okay. But it's, it's do kind, a it's YouTube kind of video funny. and no. But I've also written a song, the only song I've ever written so far, and we wrote it in the 80s, Michael Orland, Judy Quay, and I, and it's called The Light of Love, and I've done it across the country uh, when we were touring a while back, and I haven't done it in a while. And when I was, um, I'm really considering because just like my song I put out now, My Beautiful Day, which was, I recorded on my first album for RCA, now it mm. opens my show as part of my history. Oh, wow. Can we hear a little Such bit of happy, it, please? Maybe hear a little oh, bit of it, please. Oh, my God. Is there, can I do it? Do, 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 do. No. Do, 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 do. I love the echo. <laughs> no, I don't even know where I go from there. But it's, like, <laughs> but it's, on, but it's on. It's on iTunes and CD Baby, and we have a video online uh, where we were in the studio. We're on stage. We're at the beach, and it's happy. And I'm getting the reaction from people. And we need this now. This country yeah. mm. is in dire need of some happiness. We do. So to, to lighten one's heart, right. and that's what I'm hearing from everybody. And they're going home and humming it. And uh, the song we wrote is not that kind of song, but it's very about love and self-worth and sharing that love with others. And it's called The Light of Love. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I, like I really want to go in the studio and record that and mm. uh, put mm. it out there. I think the world is just, uh, you know, 
we go, we're, we need songs like this. Well, that can, promise that you can don't be say it, me. just you'll do it. Do it, yeah. Because yeah. we want to hear it. Yeah. We need it. <laughs> I'll play it on yeah. my show, on right, the right, network, right. wherever we can we share it. We all need it. We all need it. And it's so, so important. It's all right. So important. We only have a few minutes left. I know coming up in Palm Springs, which is a sold out show, right? Yes. Coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, where else are you going to be? Or tell us where, in Palm Springs, where are you going to be? Even uh, I'm going to be at, it's, it's a series called Cabaret 88. It's at, uh, it's in the small room or the library of the Annenberg. It's hmm. like, it's done, it's gonna, only just going to be me and Michael, voice and piano. Mm-hmm. So 88 keys, 88 tables, whatever, the I whole thing. It. So it's very intimate. Um, so that's where that's going to be. We're going to be there March 14th and March 15th. And uh, there is, I understand, there's a, a big waiting list in case anybody cancels. That's great. Uh, so that's nice to know. <laughs> yeah, uh, Palm Springs is uh, a blast, too, by and, the way. Um, and then we're just, you know, we're, uh, piecemeal, we're doing a tour. And we won't have, like, a whole chain of dates on top of each other, but we do them as they come. Right, mm-hmm. right. You know, and in the mm-hmm. meantime, I do want to go in the studio. And mm. I may, maybe you know I would love to do a live recording of mm. my my show. Oh, that too. would be fun. Have you, you ever know. done that before? Uh, no, I haven't done it before. We tried to in New York, but I didn't. Something wasn't quite right with the sound. So, oh yeah, um, you don't want to. You have to really do it in the right place. Yeah. Though, for the. Yeah, because I've heard some amazing yeah. live, and then there's yeah. some that I'm like, ooh, they shouldn't have done that. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they shouldn't right? have done it. All right. Well, right. David, tell us a, again. Tell us about my. My next, next breath. breath. Next it's yes. happening uh, Sunday, March nineteenth. It's a fundraiser for uh, our wonderful film. That's uh, about everybody taking a breath. You know, the people watching this film, I want them to feel like they're part of that class, mm. and they're taking the breath along with them. So it's going to be great. With uh, we have su- surprise guests as well, uh, and Jeez. one of them is Jamie Brewer from American Horror Story. Oh, great! So she'll be there. It'll be a fun evening. We're g- actually going to have a camera uh, on the side near the bar. So if somebody wants to get up and like a testimony type uh, of thing, testimony or? for the 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 film, uh, possibly be in it or or something that's you know building up to it. We that's, should go. To that's I want to go. We go Come. Testimony. Yeah, it's on <laughs> Sunday. I can go. Um, oh I my mean, goodness! And to hear this beautiful oh. right person saying we can be your backup dancers okay yeah. <laughs> <And singers. laughs> yeah, I could use them. I have some numbers that you can you okay. move to all right well some kickball yeah. changes there I'm kind of that I'm not <laughs> I'm not <laughs> that Midwest bi- white boy rhythm you, I don't you, can't do it anymore <laughs> I you used to it. be able to I don't can't do it anymore you're getting out, the, the age is getting on you yeah oh. almost 50 oh you're such a baby oh you're a baby you <laughs> hold me hold me she's a youngin <laughs> I've, you know, there was a time I was the youngest person in my class. And it's no longer the truth. No. <laughs> it's, like, it's like so. Well, funny. in your class, and you're probably still the youngest, right. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know where any of them uh, oh, okay. are. You know, but uh, I'm <laughs> the, yeah, I'm the youngest of the first cousins, so it's like I am too. I am too. Really? I am too. I am. You are. You're a youngest of first cousins. Too? No, I had younger cousins. Oh, so. Okay. Really? Uh, well, the first yeah, because my uh, mother had younger brothers. Oh, uh, okay. So okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm I have at least three cousins that were younger than, well, no, my cousin Danny's older than me, but the two uh, two girl cousins are younger. Well, so I wasn't exactly. We'll include you. We'll, in, we'll include you in this one. Baby. <laughs> baby, baby. Well, Rosalind, thank yes, you so baby. much thank for you. being yeah. here. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Will you come back? Yeah, anytime. Maybe you can come back and, because Erica can't always co-host with me. She's. So maybe you can come co-host with me I'd sometimes. Love to. I would be love fun. that. Yeah. And David, of course, we love you too. Yeah. David Zimmerman. Um, so tell us, where do people find you, and where do people find David? Uh, on my website, mm-hmm. uh, www.rosalindkind.com. You can see updates on appearances, where I've been. There's my tweets, my, my some of my posts, and. Uh, press and all that kind of stuff anybody looking for a booking <laughs> um, right. can find right. that and i'm also on facebook that's right so uh that's where you can find me right now or walk on the street or maybe at the pavilions market <laughs> <laughs> I, I love locks. pavilions i, I, mean, love I, pavilions. I would say the laundromat too but now i have that in my house oh there you go <laughs> well, right. i would do your laundry so go ahead <laughs> Uh, www.davidszimmerman.com. S. Yes, I had to put the S in because I lost my old one, oh, and man. it's now a Chinese porn site. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> wow. We love that. Uh, David, davidszimmerman.biz. So don't go there. That's, David S. Zimmerman. Now that you said that, I will be going there <laughs> after the show. There. Check <laughs> it out right away. <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, uh, the Catalina website. You could buy your tickets, tickets? for the fun show we're going to have. 
Perfect. And thank you. Erica, we're going to go, right? Yeah, uh, yes, we're, we're going to go. And March 19th, you can, Erica Renee Davis, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram at Erica Renee D. And yeah, I don't really do my website so much anymore. But Erica Renee Davis is my website.com. But Twitter, we Instagram, might. Erica Renee D. Are you going to come yeah. co host with me more often? I, yes. Because I love I'm, her and I'm I miss here for her. It. She's I'm adorable. Here for it. Isn't she thank adorable? You. Pretty. All yeah, right. Well, thank you, every, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We stuff. so excited that uh, Rosalind and David could stop in. Uh, we're going to be back next week. I think David said you're going to have Jerry Jewell and yes, and Chris Hendricks is coming. Oh, they're coming next week. They're both coming mm-hmm. in. Aww, you going to come? You, you come? Okay. Oh, there we go. They're gonna, it's going to be a blast. So yeah. more fun, and we're going to talk more about. My, My next, next breath. breath. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you next week on On Our Tony Suite right here on Universal Broadcasting Network. Bye. This has been On Air with Tony Sweet. Don't worry. There's more online. Search On Air with Tony Sweet on iTunes for fast shows and exclusive behind the scenes content. On Air with Tony Sweet every Wednesday and Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific right here on UBNRadio.com. <laughs>